Hello friends, here we are again uh, with another video on molecular biology uh, series. This is the fifth video on the series uh, and I will be discussing the cot analysis in this uh, video. Focusing mainly on the analysis of uh, the reassociation of melted DNA and how we can categorize the DNA on that basis which actually encompasses the whole idea about the genome complexity. So does a DNA melt? Yeah, it does. The melting of a DNA is actually called as the uh, denaturation of a DNA and it uh, is uh, brought forth by the application of the heat. What happens is actually when DNA is in solution and it gets heated or we heat the solution uh, of the DNA, it gets denatured, which is called as melting also. The denaturation is actually because of the breakage of the hydrogen bonds between the two uh, strands of the DNA duplex. And you, uh, by the application of the heat, the AT base pairs are the first to break because of the only two hydrogen bonds between the adenine and thymine. While as there is a, a three uh, bonds exist between the guanine and cytosine, it takes a little more heat and little more time to break. So when you apply a, a heat to the DNA solution, the first areas which get denatured or uh, the hydrogen bonds uh, break in that area, which are AT rich, as you can see in the uh, encompassing right hand side diagram. You will see the uh, region which melts first or denatures first is actually rich in AT base pairs followed by the GC base pair. So when the solution is allowed to cool, this heated solution is allowed to cool, the DNA has an inherent capacity uh, to reassociate itself back in its native form to form a native double helix structure back. This whole process is called as reassociation kinetics. And during the melting process also, there is another uh, important aspect of it is that the absorbance capacity of the DNA also changes. The aspect of uh, DNA absorbance is the ability of a DNA to absorb UV light uh, at around uh, 260 nanometer wavelength. Whether DNA is in uh, the helical structure or in the single stranded structure, melted structure, it has the capacity to uh, absorb the UV light. But what happens during the melting process is that the absorption, absorbance capacity, the absorbance capacity of the DNA usually increases. That means it absorbs more uh, UV light at 260 nanometers. So what uh, then you can distinguish the melting process also and you can distinguish the two structures of the uh, DNA solution as well. The un unmelted native DNA duplex has a low UV absorbance. So it absorbs uh, lower than the melted ones. So if you uh, follow the trend of the melting process in a DNA, you will see that while we give more and more heat and DNA uh, melts more and more, it absorbs more and more UV light at uh, 260 nanometer wavelength. This phenomenon of increase in the capability of the DNA's absorbance of the light is called as hyperchromicity. As you can see in the encompassing diagram, you will see uh, the absorbance capacity follows a sigmoid curve with the peak at 95 degrees. So the increase in UV absorbance uh, uh, for the denatured coil is used uh, to follow the transition of the helix to coil as well. The temperature at which uh, the half of the DNA uh, in a solution melts and reaches a midpoint is called as the melting temperature or TM of the DNA solution as well. So TM is the half concentration of a DNA solution at which half of the DNA is denatured and half is present as the helical form. I hope it's clear now. So in molecular biology, the genome complexity can be also given uh, as a function of the reassociation kinetics that is following the trend how this uh, denatured DNA will reassociate itself back in its native form. 
this whole concept is called as cohort analysis and was developed and utilized uh, in mid 1960s by Roy Britton and uh, Eric Davidson and his associates to distinguish the different uh, parts and different ways uh, by which the DNA or a genome of a particular species can reassociate. The whole uh, complexity is given in terms of a cohort analysis. Whereas COT uh, in the cohort is called as the concentration and T is the uh, time interval at which the uh, DNA will reassociate. Uh, based upon this, the genome complexity can be divided into three uh, different uh, uh, categories. One of the first categories is the unique sequence DNA. This is the fraction of a genomic DNA which represents the slowest phase of the cot curve. The, it takes a lot of time to reassociate itself back into its native form after the denaturation. So it represents usually the coding regions of the genome. So the coding, greater the coding regions of the genome, greater will be the time taken by them to associate uh, themselves with their complementary sequencing, uh, complementary sequences. And uh, usually this uh, type of a unique sequence DNA uh, occurs only one or two uh, or few copies per haploid genome. So uh, in the diagram, you will see uh, this uh, as the last part of the blue version of this cot analysis curve. Uh, the, these are the regions which are the single copy DNA and hence they take time to reassociate themselves uh, with their complementary sequences to make the heteroduplex or the uh, helical structure back uh, in its native form. Uh, and hence the name unique sequence DNA. So another category based upon the cot analysis is the moderately repetitive DNA. It is the fraction of the genome which presents usually the middle uh, part of this cot analysis. And it represents uh, those genes whose products are required in unusually large quantities by the organism. One of the classical examples in humans is the RNA encoding gene uh, which codes for the 45S precursor. 45S precursor is actually the fragment of the uh, 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 gene which is responsible for the three different copies of the RNA which make up ribosomes 18S, 5.8S and 28S rRNA, ribosomal RNA. So this is usually in humans repeated around uh, 10 to 10,000 copies and hence uh, they are usually making uh, themselves complementary easily and can reassociate uh, quickly than the unique ones, unique uh, DNA repetitive sequencing. And the third one uh, uh, is the highly repetitive DNA. Highly repetitive DNA reanneals very fast. It, it usually makes the first phase of the cord curve, as you can see. Immediately after the uh, decrease of the temperature, the DNA reassociates as quickly as possible. They are usually representing the short sequences, which can be from 2 base pair to 20 to 30 base pair, and mostly telomeric region uh, DNA and centromeric region DNA fall in this category. Uh, some of the tandem repeats are also sometimes called as satellite DNA because they make a distinct band during the bion density uh, or centrifugation of the DNA. Uh, of the bulk DNA. In the bulk DNA, there are two different bands. One is the bulk DNA band and there is the separate band which is called a satellite DNA band. This satellite DNA is actually the part of from the telomeres or centromeres and contain usually short sequences. So when they have tandem repeats, they tend to uh, find each other quickly in the reassociation uh, kinetics and hence uh, can um, reanneal very fast and hence make the first part of the cord analysis. The predominance of highly repetitive DNA varies between the species, but typically usually it uh, makes around 10 to 30 uh, percent of the genome of a cell of an individual or, or of a species. And since uh, it reanneals very fast, it is the low complexity and simple sequence DNA. So in a cohort analysis, there are three uh, major uh, parts or chunks of a DNA which we can categorize the complexity of a genome of any individual or of any cell. The first part is the highly repetitive DNA, which makes the, uh, the reanneling very quick. Then the middle part, which is of moderately repetitive DNA. Then the blue part in the curve here is for the unique uh, 
sequences of a DNA which usually are present uh, one copy or two copies or few copies per genome as you can see in the diagram. So this was it about the cord analysis. I hope you enjoyed the video and it was beneficial for you. In the next lecture, uh, I will be discussing the replication process and machinery. Uh, till then, see you. And I hope uh, you like the contents of the uh, videos and uh, they are beneficial to you. And if you feel that uh, uh, they are good enough for you, you can order the book from the Amazon from which I have made these videos. Uh, it is available in the Amazon in both print and Kindle format. And do subscribe to my channel. You know why to subscribe. See you then.